Good afternoon. Today we are going to talk to you about the Community First Choice option, CFCO. The goal of today's presentation is to provide you with an overview of CFCO and discuss the ways in which you may be impacted. For most people served by the OPWDD Home and Community-Based Services Waiver, there will be no impact in the way in which they receive their services. For others who are not eligible for the waiver, CFCO will allow them to access a wider array of state plan service options that were not previously available to them. Before we get into the details of CFCO, we would like to take a quick moment to review how the Medicaid program works in New York State. Once an individual with an intellectual or developmental disability, IDD, has been determined eligible to receive Medicaid benefits, they may receive Medicaid services through our Home and Community-Based Services Waiver or through a state plan option. There are a few differences between an HCBS waiver and a state plan. HCBS waivers are available to a limited group of individuals and there is a capped number of enrollees. State plan services, on the other hand, are available to all Medicaid enrollees who are eligible for CFCO. They do not require a renewal from the Federal Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, and there is no cap on the number of individuals who can receive state plan services. The benefit of a state plan is that it allows states to expand access to a wide array of services to individuals who may not formally have been able to access these services. Slide four provides a helpful overview of CFCO. To be eligible to receive CFCO services, individuals must live in the community and have an institutional level of care. There are a few exceptions, however. Individuals residing in a certified setting, such as an IRA, are not eligible to receive CFCO services. Also, individuals who use special income rules for Medicaid eligibility, such as some children who receive Medicaid eligibility based on parental deeming rules, which waives parental income, also called family of one, are not eligible to receive CFCO services. <clears throat> All CFCO services will be available to eligible people in both the fee-for-service and Medicaid managed care system. CFCO makes certain OPWDD waiver services available more widely as a state plan service. The services within the dash box indicate CFCO services that overlap with OPWDD HCBS waiver services. These services will continue to be available through the waiver to individuals who do not qualify for CFCO. Also, individuals with IDD may now have access to CFCO services such as home delivered meals, which were not previously available to them. Please note that community habilitation will be referred to as Skill Acquisition Maintenance and Enhancement, known as SAME, under CFCO. So if you are eligible for CFCO, you will receive the service of SAME, but there will be no change in service provision and it will be provided to you by the same provider. CFCO will be available to individuals in two different ways. The first, for people enrolled in the waiver and in Medicaid fee-for-service. And the second, for people enrolled in the waiver and in Medicaid managed care. OPWDD will retain authorization for the overlapping CFCO services for eligible individuals with IDD, for people who are enrolled in the HCBS waiver, and for people who have institutional level of care but who are not enrolled in the waiver. The local Department of Social Services, LDSS, will continue to authorize personal care services to all individuals in the fee-for-service environment. The Medicaid Managed Care Plan will authorize all CFCO services for all people enrolled in a managed care plan who are eligible for CFCO. 
As mentioned before, all CFCO services will be included in the Medicaid Managed Care Benefit Package, including community habilitation. Let's take a closer look at how this may impact you. It is important to note that with the implementation of CFCO, everyone receiving community habilitation today will continue to receive the service from the same provider. If you do not meet the CFCO eligibility requirements, you will continue to receive community habilitation under the HCBS waiver. If you do meet the CFCO eligibility requirements, you will now receive the service of skill acquisition maintenance and enhancement, same, under CFCO. The service provision will not change as the same provider will be utilized. Now let's take a deeper dive into some specific examples to see how the implementation of CFCO may impact you. If your child receives Medicaid due to special rules such as parental deeming or family of one, your child is not eligible for CFCO and his or her services will continue as is through the HCBS waiver. You will have the same provider continuing to deliver the service and your provider will bill Medicaid as they do now. If you self-direct your HCBS services with budget authority, you will continue to receive your community habilitation services as is through the HCBS waiver because CFCO does not include self-direction with budget authority. Your fiscal intermediary will continue to bill for self-hired staffing as they do now. If you reside in an IRA, you will continue to receive your community habilitation services through the HCBS waiver because you are not eligible for CFCO if you reside in a certified setting. If you are enrolled in a Medicaid managed care plan and live in a certified setting, you are not eligible for CFCO and will continue to receive your community habilitation services as is through the HCBS waiver. If you are enrolled in a Medicaid managed care plan and meet all other CFCO eligibility requirements, you will receive skill acquisition, maintenance, and enhancement, same under CFCO, but the service provision will not change as the same provider will be utilized. Your provider will build a Medicaid managed care plan for your services and your provider will be guaranteed the same Medicaid rate for at least two years. For additional information on CFCO, please visit the DOH website listed on the slide. For additional questions, you may reach out to cfco at health.ny.gov.